We'll come to our last design study and I'm pretty sure that some Porsche experts out there are asking themselves right now, am I still in the right live stream? What should be underneath which Porsche? And because it's so brilliant, I hand over for the revelation part to Michael and maybe you can tell the audience what's underneath this cover. So underneath this cover, we have the Vision Porsche Rendins. <laughs> Uh, which is even written here on the side. Uh, yeah, the interesting part of this concept is that uh, in comparison to the other studies, it was a completely different starting point. So it was really, we put out uh, the question or the challenge, how far can you stretch the uh, Porsche design language? Is it possible for a car with this size, with this proportion, with this architecture to apply the, and further develop the Porsche design language that in the end when you look at the car you immediately have the feeling that uh, it is a Porsche and when I look at the car I'm still very happy and I think uh, uh, we managed this pretty well. I have to admit, when I heard about that uh, design study the first time, I was not sure if that is working. But when I see it right now with my own eyes, I have to say, here comes together what belongs together. But in the end, uh, Stefan, you have to sell that to the audience because uh, in the social media part, it's all about feeding the audience with the stuff they want to see. What do you think? Is it a tough task to sell this uh, car as a Porsche to the audience? No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, Rendins is one thing everybody knows. Then imagine a trailer with an old ST or RS in the back. You know, imagine some surfboards, skis, snowboards there. I mean, like this is, for me, it's a dream come true, actually. Um, uh, when I saw it, I ordered one. You know, <laughs> so just put, it, put my name on the list as yeah. well. <laughs> okay. uh, I have two, two persons. Kids, you know, this is a car which I actually need every day. So uh, I don't think there's any doubt people would flip out for that car. <laughs> so maybe they will flip out even more when you uh, tell us something about those details, Michael. Yeah, um, again, as I said, challenge was we have a design language established on our uh, production cars. How far can we stretch it? So the approach here, since you have pretty big surface, was really to build up a certain tension in the surfacing very reduced, uh, very puristic, but again, having this uh, tension. And then one of the major parts was really to emphasize on the wheel arches, because that gives this kind of yeah, sporty feeling and give that car in this mono volume vanish segment, uh, um, this kind of uh, Porsche characteristics. Mm -hmm. Stefan, you're also the man for the details. What details did you like most when you saw it the first time? Uh, the first time, uh, I liked the surface the most. It's like one surface which goes around. It's, it's so beautiful. It's like attention also. And I like the front very much. Um, <laughs> not, the, not the backside this time? <laughs> <laughs> I like the backside also. Also, but... But the front, <laughs> I like the lightning very much. You know, it's like... It's, uh, I like the lightning design, the intakes. And if you look on the front, of course, I like the one-seater in the middle. This is like a super sports car for me. So it's, it's all world in one, mm -hmm. I, would, I would call it. I mean, just regarding the headlamps, I mean, I'm glad that you're mentioning this. Uh, because, uh, I mean, this is really when we worked on the uh, Taycan or the, the, the Mission E, which was the show car for the Taycan, we were very much uh, inspired by this idea here, how we could further develop our design language uh, in the, on the headlamps. And uh, what you see today on the production car on the Taycan, has here its starting point. Yeah, it's, it's like the electric era uh, with what you can see exactly. with the headlights, in, kind of, uh, kind of. Um, but when we're uh, taking a look back into the year 2004 when you started, what has changed since then uh, in terms of those uh, design studies? I mean, a lot of things have definitely changed if we talk about the process, the possibilities uh, with the uh, digital world, we can go into virtual world, uh, we can uh, play this ping pong. Um, so definitely things have changed there. We became faster, we have more possibilities. What didn't change is really this mindset, this spirit, this Weissach Porsche vibe, uh, where 
let's say everybody is really uh, has uh, is enjoying looking into the future, exploring all these possibilities, and in a way um, is as well very open to question things. So this didn't change, and I think is really the key for the success of the brand. Talking about this uh, Weissach vibe, this hashtag, uh, Stefan, you are going to publish some photos of this project on your social media channels. What do you, what do you think? What will work best for the audience? I have no idea. I think <laughs> every car is so special. Every car will find its audience. I mean, it's 15 cars. Uh, so... I'm totally open. I will be surprised how the reactions will be. Yeah, and some of the audience maybe uh, will check out your Instagram profile and they can, they can like and vote with uh, their own opinion. Um, at the end, I really have to ask it a, that question because uh, as I learned today, it's not only for the design part, it's also about learning things for other technologies, for future. So how do you decide what to take and what to toss? Is there any, any checklist you use where you say, yeah, this is going well, so we take that? Uh, or is it more like gut feeling? I think there are a lot of uh, people, the decision makers in the big companies that would love to have this list because then it would be pretty easy to take decisions, uh, basically saying, okay, this project most likely is more successful than the other. So um, I think this is not possible, or at least I can't do this list. So the big question is then, if you go into this future, if you go into this day after tomorrow, then first thing is you explore there everything. Um, you, you develop uh, scenarios, concepts, and then you have basically different possibilities to approach these future requirements. And then in the end of the day, it's really a question how do we then in the design department decide and uh, uh, honestly I think it's just the intuition. But that's based on experience of many, many years and maybe designers have this, uh, yeah, since they always work in this kind of fantasy world in a way, um, yeah, that's a kind of uh, experience but uh, it's a gut feeling, yeah. So he's literally the man of secrets because I think if you had this checklist, you wouldn't reveal it to the world. I'm pretty sure about that. Stefan, um, what design study what would you wish for and why? I mean, you, you saw a lot of studies already, more than we can show here, but well, is there any study left uh, you would love to see? I would like to see a drone, a two-seater drone, a silent two-seater drone to fly because I think... That's the next step of transportation, will be flying. You know, people do wingsuits already, unbelievable, 30 years ago. <laughs> and actually, I would like to have a cargo bike, a cool Porsche <laughs> cargo bike for, because I'm living in a city, would be a, hmm. would be a challenge. A big inspiration for me already. These are completely different starting points to talk about studies without wheels or just two wheels. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you can see it as an official request right now. Um, at the end, I have to ask one question because um, today the, the, yeah, the mobility sector is more becoming like a smartphone on four wheels. So the interior design um, is increasingly important to uh, the buyers. So do you have already some interior design studies or is that just mm -hmm. a thing for the future? No, definitely. I mean, the I say interior experience is part of these studies, and uh, even if it starts uh, like this car, uh, there is an interior. So for each of these studies, we have uh, ideas for the interior. But at the end of the day, a few of our secrets we could uh, should keep for ourselves. So wait and see. At least for our next talk uh, unseen, so you have to keep those secrets, but we're going to answer some of the questions and this is where we hand over to our Q&A part. <laughs> So it's not a smartphone I use, but it's a tablet. And then there I have the question from our Q&As here. So the first question is, how many studies had been developed so far? 
um, a lot of studies. <laughs> so as I, I don't know if it's it's in general for yeah. Porsche or since you you've been the uh, no, I mean, chief designer. It's, it's it's part of our daily business, so to say. So over the year, we always develop I don't know maybe 10, 15 uh, studies uh, in different stages. Uh, either it's just a sketch or a full size model. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, and over the year, yes, there might be a couple of models. So how many have you seen already? Not just photographed, seen. <laughs> uh, all of them. I don't know anymore, actually. A lot. Must be more, you know, than, more than 20. You know, the problem is he knows basically <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, here's the next question from our chat. Can you mention three design elements you believe we will continue to see on a Porsche model in 2050? Are you still working there? 50. <laughs> uh, now I have to go back because we are already in 2060. <laughs> uh, I mean, as well, hard to predict, but uh, some main design principles. Uh, again, if you talk about how we treat surfaces, I think we will still see in the future. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why we do these studies uh, to further develop it. and. Uh, so we are not yet in 250. So. <laughs> so from a perspective of a Porsche addicted and a photographer, what do you think, what should remain until 2050 and ahead? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, well, I, mean, I think the logo, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because I, still, I think it's... It's brilliant. It's brilliant, timeless. Uh, I have no idea, actually. Uh. But that's a good Maybe keyword. Maybe fly line or something. But it's mm. a, good, a good keyword, the logo, because there's another question. Um, the red bus has a new Porsche crest. Is that holy or could you imagine a further developed crest in the future? I mean, uh, I'm very grateful for this question since it really shows the character of these studies that uh, when we do this, there are no restrictions, even the badge. But if you would go back in history, you would see already how often the badge has been changed and further developed. Um, and uh, here we took the freedom just to do another proposal. Uh, but uh, yes, it's definitely something with the badge, with the crest, with the logo, you are very, very carefully. So um, I think that will take another, <laughs> I don't know, maybe 50 years <laughs> before we see such a badge. Um, Speaking of uh, challenges, um, there's another question. What is the most challenging design um, of Porsche? The most challenging, yeah, I mean, the lo most challenging part is uh, really uh, if you have a brand like the Porsche brand with this strong history, where you always try to uh, create a connection to the past, but still uh, try to be uh, progressive and uh, let's say keeping the design uh, language very fresh. Uh, I would see that this is really the biggest challenge for us designers. So what is the biggest challenge for a photographer? Which model is uh, very challenging to, to capture? Like from these we have seen in the yeah. book? It was this one actually. So why? Uh, because the surface, it's, it's a one surface model, it, you know, you have, there are hardly any shadows to play with, so that's, that was the hardest. <laughs> but I think you did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> so um, next question is, uh, how do you decide which sketches will make it into a clay model and which will be kept in the computer? Hmm. I mean, again, that's, there is no, uh, let's say, uh, existing list. Um, it, it depends really on the project. It depends on how much we are convinced that this would have uh, either a chance to be realized later or, for example, in that example here, where we really wanted to uh, find out how far we can stretch our design language. You can't do this in a virtual model you have to do a physical model really to experience this, that you are able to touch it. So there are different criteria, but it's from each project uh, to the other project uh, different. So here's a question. Uh, it's quite similar to that we talked already about, but I want to ask it anyways. Um, what design feature is untouchable for Porsche? The logo, the badge, <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah, but even there, as I tried to uh, explain, that has been changed uh, slightly over the years. 
And these studies uh, basically show that um, all the design cues we know today um, um, have to be modified and further developed for the future um, uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, in order to, to still have a very fresh uh, design language. And uh, if you would like to push this process in the first approach, you have to, um, let's say, challenge every uh, design cue. So there, is, there are no restrictions and then you go back. Um, but again, I think these models show you can go pretty far into a new world of design languages. Uh, next question is, what importance does design have for the brand and is this changing? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, now asking the designer, I would say it's the most important <laughs> part. Um, but again, it's always the whole package. But the design of the car, first of all, is the first thing um, that you see on the product. Um, it is uh, not just the the shape, it is as well the, the message that is behind it. So um, design is important for creating brand identity and uh, by this building up a brand. And uh, as a designer, again, uh, I'm deeply convinced in technology. Um, it will be much tougher in the future to differentiate brands by technology. Um, so I'm as well deeply convinced that then design becomes even more important in the future. So from your perspective, what do you say? Is, is that fact changing that design is important for a brand? Yeah, it's getting more important, definitely. So you can see it in the past, it's getting more and more important. So good, a good position for Porsche, I think. For designers. <laughs> for designers and for Porsche. <laughs> so your job is saved. Um, <laughs> next question is a very interesting question. What's the motivation behind making Porsche unseen? And I think the key word is today. <laughs> today. I mean, that was uh, not... Uh, um, the, the unseen project was not really uh, a normal project, I would say, with the starting point. And then we knew in the end, basically, there's a start of production uh, in uh, now mid of November. I mean, as we tried to... It was an idea that started. And then since it is very unusual, um, there was a lot of discussion necessary, a lot of meetings, uh, agreements, and then you could say since we have gone through all these uh, gates in a way, um, then it was just uh, realizing and then it was pretty fast. Um, so you could say in a way by accident that it happens now, could have been happened as well half a year ago or maybe half a year later, but uh, uh, we were deeply convinced that this is a good idea and we are happy that uh, today we can show some of the studies. Yeah, I'm pretty happy as well because I've never seen such studies before in my life and I'm sure the audience out there as well. Um, there's a question and I think we have to we have to reveal it. You have got 15 um, design studies in the book, right? Yep. So taking those, if you could pick two out of these 15 studies and bring them into production, which ones would you choose and why? Maybe Stefan. Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my new family car. Uh, so this is number one. And the uh, 904, the Vision 904. The one liter car is a very small car, sports car. Beautiful. I would go for it. So maybe I can ask you the last question, which was also integrated in this question. What uh, model are you most uh, proud of? That's like uh, asking uh, the parents uh, which of your child's you're most proud of. <laughs> I mean, whenever you're involved in, in the project, uh, that's your favorite baby at the time. Um, so I, I would say I'm proud of all these models. First of all, that we were able to do it, that we succeeded as well uh, with this really challenging project here or other projects. For me, uh, since I love driving and these small and puristic uh, sports cars, for me, uh, all these uh, studies that deal with these small and puristic sports cars are maybe my favorite uh, category of cars. So I think we're running out of time, but I have two questions left here and I want to ask them you. So the next question is, um, what do the Vision Spiders elements point to with respect to the future production cars? 
Um, as well, hard to predict. Uh, there are a lot of elements and maybe even now we don't know which elements uh, we will use in the future. Uh, but it will definitely inspire us. But it's, it's hard to point out now uh, details. And we also talked about it. It's always uh, yeah, a learning and failing. And also things which are not working are also good for you to know. So I think it's, it's difficult to answer those questions, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, uh, but again, this, doing these studies is part uh, and is showing that uh, it's not so easy uh, to uh, build up a relationship to the future. So here's our last question from the audience. Uh, with Porsche's lineup much bigger now than when Michael joined in 2004, what does he think is the biggest challenge with giving such different cars all that distinctive Porsche, Porsche design feel? I mean, uh, it is challenging uh, as a job, uh, no, no question about it, but it's uh, part of our prof profession to define what are the design principles that you can carry and uh, apply to different type of cars. And I think we have shown it in the past that it is possible. Uh, we are showing this with these studies. So again, from my point of view, there are no limitations uh, and it's partly uh, yeah, business as usual for a designer. But not business as usual for us. So thank you so much for all these insights and of course for all your answers also, uh, Stefan. Thank you very much. And of course, thanks for your questions. And if you're hyped right now about that project, I've got some advices for you. The Porsche Newsroom publishes a, a series of articles about that design studies and of course also the Web TV format 911 magazine. So stay tuned for more to come and Stefan already has it in his hands. If you are a Porsche fan, or you at least Ooh. know one, here's a good Christmas gift. The Porsche Unseen book is published now, and it's available, for example, in the Porsche Museum shop. And if you say, yes, I really enjoyed that Unseen experience, digital and maybe in the future also with that book, but I want to see those studies on my own. You have to be a little bit patient because in 2021, the museum will show an exhibition with a selection of those studies. So until then, stay healthy and see you then. Stay Bye. Tuned.